Hey guys and girls, what's going on? Viridia here, and I'm here with Down the Scope, the gaming podcast you can't miss. And we are on episode 24, and uh, I'm excited about that. I don't know about you, Anakin. Woo! We're always <laughs> excited about the next level. So, that means we're excited about every other, or every new episode. So every every time, we're going to be excited about the number. Indeed. Just remember that. It's kind of like anyway. the Playhouse. When we <laughs> yeah, say 24, you have, to, you have to yell at your monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 24, Whoa! Or just leave a comment it's like woohoo, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, you know you know us, and if you don't, I'm Viridia Guru Twenty Two, and my my co-host tonight, uh, as always, is Anakin. Woo! What's going on, gang? Yeah, and uh, tonight's episode is kind of special because tonight is our first episode that we are acknowledging that we are now the official podcast for T uh, for TGN. That's right. And uh, for, all, for any of you who are always following us who don't know, uh, TGN is a uh, – it's kind of a – it's a new channel out there, and they are they are building very rapidly a, uh, a very successful – kind of a, kind of like a space station, if you think of it that way, <laughs> where all these ships dock into the space station. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have no idea where you're going with this, but I love it. <laughs> My analogies are kind of off the wall sometimes, but but think of it like all these, you know, they dock, they come in, they produce stuff, and it all comes out, and basically it's it's just it's just a big factory of content. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? A huge space factory of content in a good way. <laughs> in a great, oh yeah, 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 of course, and in the best way possible, but. That, you know, we we have decided to go ahead and, and become uh, part of TGN, and um, you know, we we have a huge fan base as it is, and uh, we have a huge face of hard, uh, fan base of hard scopers. And to those of you who are new to us, we hope you do enjoy. And tonight's episode is going to be geared toward letting you guys learn who we are, as well as the fans, because we're going to go in a little bit more in depth with who uh, I and Anakin are as people, and how we kind of got started in the gaming world and not only that i think i want to talk about um how we came to be on youtube so successfully indeed because we <laughs> because are super successful <laughs> we no we are we are uh scene and are successful we're yeah, at that level uh, yeah exactly i mean i had a million followers until i decided to start a new channel and i just yeah exactly I, me too silly. me too as a matter of fact i did too and then i started i my first channel was punchinello and I got fed. It's kind of like beating a game. You get fed up with the end. You know, you're the you're the baddest person in the world. You just got to start over. Exactly. So, yeah. So, it, so I I changed my voice. I used to, you know this is my, this is my real voice right here. I changed it. I kind of gave myself this weird you know normal sound. In any case, <laughs> I, have, I you know I have no idea where this is going. I love it though. <laughs> it doesn't have to go anywhere. You're not allowed to host anymore. No more. <laughs> going on a tangent damn it nah, but anyway <laughs> anyway guys if you're here with tgn we really appreciate you watching we do hope you stick around we have we have backlogged every episode we have done we are on our 24th episode we backlog all the other ones so you can go through and the the topics that we talk about aren't always relevant to just that time uh so i do encourage you to go watch them and you might hear a topic that you you might want to ask us in the future it might have already been answered we do also encourage that you send in your your uh you know your questions your comments anything you have to say to podcast down the scope at gmail.com we read every single one we may not we're getting more and more now as we as we get more popular so we may not answer every single one but we will be able to direct you to you know the episode that it was mentioned, and if it's, it's if it's a really good one, we will base the whole episode sometimes around that topic because that's a topic you guys want to hear. In fact, we just did that. Episode twenty three was all about digital distribution. We had talked about it a little bit uh, in some prior episodes, but we had some individuals write in uh, to our email. And, um, you know, we, we got so much interest in that topic because we'd kind of touched on it a few times prior that we decided to devote the, uh, the entire episode to it. And we talked about the, uh, the individuals that wrote in, and, and uh, we always like to kind of name drop some of our fans in the, uh, in the podcast episodes. And so, you know, it was something that was, uh, you know, really to us, it's very important because this will, this will affect, you know, the new consoles coming out and various other things. So whenever there's a really good topic, uh, we do like to uh, devote the entire podcast to it like we did last week exactly and and you know we did that actually twice last week we also did the game endings 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was good. <laughs> that was another one. We ended up we ended up turning a forty five minute podcast into an hour and a half because <laughs> we got to talking about game endings. I mean, that's the thing. You don't really know how these conversations are going to go, um, you know. But uh, I do I do impress upon you to stick around for the whole episode if you're not into you know obviously sitting and listening to one thing. Put us on in the background of a game. That's what a podcast is. It's meant to be listened to while you're doing other things. I do I do want to stress that the MP three download will be in the comments if you'd rather put it on your iPod and we're still working on getting on iTunes uh, as of right now now with the help of TG, uh, TGN we might we might be able to do that more easily but uh, I think that's pretty much the introduction yeah, yeah, um, yeah. welcome so, TGN audience welcome. welcome TGN with open arms if you guys are <laughs> I, I do I do hope that you stick around and listen and you know that this is something I want to bring up as well a lot of TGN is World of Warcraft and, uh, and and these RTS players. I impress upon you, if you do listen to us, we are not RTS play. Well, I'm not a uh, MMO player. He's an RTS player. I do impress to challenge us as gamers to get into these. I really do want to want to hear what you have to say. If you can change my mind about the worlds of, of MMOs and RTSs, because I'm just not a huge fan. And the people who have tried to convert me into these MMOs are horrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they lead a life because of it that I don't want. And, uh, and so I, and they are not the best example. I know tons of people who actually are very, you know, they, they're very conscious the amount of time that they spend on these things and stuff like that. Um, but they're the ones that don't try to encourage me to play. They've already got their stuff going. So uh, they don't need me in it. But, yeah. uh, but anyway, I'm I, surrounded in my, in my social personal life by MMO players. Okay. I mean, I am surrounded <laughs> and I have so far completely uh, denied them the pleasure of me joining them. I've played just about every other genre and every platform of gaming out there. Uh, but you know what? MMOs, I still shy away from because of exactly the same thing that you said, which was, you know, you're, you're just, they're all consuming. They just, it's like, exactly. it's like the black hole of gaming. You know, it's like either Facebook Zynga games or MMOs. One, one of those, either one of them, they're a cancer. Okay. They're a cancer <laughs> in the gaming industry. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, wow! I mean, you know, wow is actually separate. I really like wow. So <laughs> I do, but but honestly, if you if you have any wow questions, send them our way. We'll we'll try and uh, we'll try and find somebody at least to to be a guest to answer those for you as well. And um, if you would like to to see a guest, then also you know make a recommendation. We'll we'll see what we can get. And and you know um, to the TGN audience here who is uh you know who anybody who is new to the podcast if you've got a favorite TGN uh director you know maybe some of the guys uh you know that that are uh, MMO players we would love to uh you know bring them on because you know Verdi and I are not MMO players you know, we would love to bring them on and, and let them, you know, educate us as well as uh, our listeners on MMOs. Because a lot of our listeners that have followed us over here from our own channels, you know, are not going to be um, very educated on MMOs. And I would love to, you know, debate some of the things. I mean, there are some MMOs on the horizon that I'm kind of interested in. Firefall yeah. is one and uh, The Old Republic is another. And, uh, you know, Star Wars Galaxy kind of fell apart, you know, and I know it's ending in December of this year. So if Old Republic can really, you know, <laughs> live up to the hype, then, uh, you know, I might once again try to consider MMOs. But honestly, for the most part, it's, uh, it's just going to have to be such an unbelievable stellar game to have me come into it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just going to have to be amazing because I'm just not on board yet for the idea of paying a monthly fee to play a game after I've already dropped the $60. So yeah. that's, that's been my biggest issue. What I'm hoping is that soon there's going to be like a huge announcement that there's going to be like some kind of MMO coming out and we can all kind of as, as control shock jump on and take, take this, you know, and do it together. Maybe maybe that'll make it easier for us. Who knows? <laughs> Hopefully. I hope so too. But anyway, anyway, so so for those of you who don't know who uh who we are, Anakin, who the heck are you, buddy? Man, I am the ghost in your dreams. <laughs> That's it. There's That's nothing it. else need to be said. <laughs> All right, so me <laughs> No, you know it's uh, it's interesting. You know, I've I've actually uh, I've actually been fairly open with a lot of my audience over the years uh, or years, huh? Yeah, over the months that I've been <laughs> doing this, and um, 
it's almost a year. Uh, Over the year, uh, yeah. The uh, the thing is, is that, you know, I'm fairly open. I know a lot of people who get on YouTube, and and you know, there's there's a lot of uh, you know people who are scared about releasing some of their personal information and so forth. But you know, I finally come to terms and and come to grips with the idea that if somebody wants to know about you, they're just going to know. You know, they're going to find out stuff about you. You know. So yeah, yeah. I kind of gave up on the idea of trying to remain anonymous. So. Um, the thing is, is you know, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an uh, I'm an old gamer. <laughs> um, I am pro- I'm actually older than the CEO of TGN. We were just talking about that earlier. Um, I'm 37, and I've been gaming since the Atari 2600 days. Um, I uh, I probably played my first quote unquote video game uh, probably around 1979. <laughs> Jesus yeah, God. when I was uh, when I was four years old, my father brought home an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and uh, I remember also having the original Pong, uh, which was not a console game. They actually ported that. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, the first port ever <laughs> was Pong on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred because the original Pong was actually just the controller hooked to <laughs> your TV. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, the. Um, you know, the thing is, is I've been a gamer for a very, very, very long time, and um, I game on all the platforms. I game, uh, I have a, a very high-end PC that I try to keep, you know, pretty up-to-date so I can play a lot of the uh, PC exclusives. I also uh, come from a very heavy PC background. It's only been within the last uh, three to four years that I finally moved over to the current console. Um, you know, I, I played uh, a lot of Dreamcast back in the old days, and I, I uh, now I have an Xbox. I do PS3. I do the the Wii even, you know, and I do all kinds of the goofy peripherals like the Kinect and the. Uh, I do all the Wii peripherals. I've got you know all the Rock Band equipment. I'm I'm really into technology and gaming, and um, so I come back from a long, long history uh, of. Uh, you know, lit- littering my living room with all kinds of hardware to play a video game on. So, um, but you know, that's that's generally my gaming background. But I know a lot of uh, I get a lot of questions all the time, especially due to my age. You know, it's like, okay, well, what the heck? Why are you on YouTube? You know, what? What? You know, why? Are you, it's like <laughs> everybody's like, aren't you a little old for this? <laughs> and I'm like, well, not really. I mean, damn. Come on, come on. <laughs> So um, I am very happily married. Uh, I've been married for uh, four years, going on five. We, um, uh, but we've been together much longer than that. Um, my wife is a school teacher, and um, we have uh, this year uh, we have our first kids. And when I say kids plural, uh, we had twins, <laughs> uh, a boy and a girl. Uh, so that is, uh, it's kind of turned my life upside down, including my gaming habit. So I've had to change a, a little bit of my routine. Um, but uh, that's a little bit my personal life. What I do for a living uh, is pretty, pretty crazy. I work for a robotics company. I do all the technology and marketing and advertising for, uh, for the robotics company. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Anything with a button... Basically, if if it if it's got a power cord and a button, I usually handle it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have a very very heavy IT background. I actually uh, have helped some of my uh, subscribers, some of my friends from my channel. I actually help them with IT matters. Uh, I actually get a lot of IT related questions, and um, you know I I actually try not to promote that very often because <laughs> I do get so many questions about that. Um, Let's see what else uh, about me. I I do spend a little uh, a little bit of time not necessarily gaming, uh, although I I do spend probably the majority of my time doing that. But um, I actually uh, also uh, uh, have a racing ATV that I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, me and and uh, some good friends of mine, including some of my family, and actually including my wife. Believe it or not, we all uh, go out and. Uh, ride ATVs uh, in the woods, <laughs> which Damn. sounds very crazy compared to sitting behind a computer and holding a, a controller. 
Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, I've, I've got a few other hobbies. I do uh, IT on the side as a side business in the evenings, which does kind of cut into my gaming time from time to time. <laughs> but uh, I go to people's houses. I help them get viruses cleaned up and get spyware and adware removed and, uh, you know, just basically do general training and tutorial for older folks who aren't exactly... Uh, savvy on computers or don't understand email and internet and digital cameras and all this other stuff so the, one, the ones unlike you who didn't figure it out <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly just kidding yeah so you know and and you know it's funny you mention that though because there you know that that's the other thing is um uh, i'll share with you guys a little bit uh something a little more personal uh i actually don't have uh, a college degree when it comes to this kind of stuff um i uh i did extremely well in school uh, but when it came time to go to, um, to college, I came from an extremely uh, poor background. I did not have a whole lot of money growing up. Uh, my family did not do very well. Uh, my, uh, my mother did not work, and my father was the only breadwinner for me and my brother and, and my parents. So money was extremely tight. And so when it came time to go to college... Uh, I graduated uh, third in my class, and I had several scholarships, but I had to turn them all down because I didn't have enough money to pay for the housing. Housing was, uh, with all of these scholarships, they required that I live on campus. Mm -hmm. And so the problem was is that, you know, at the time, I didn't understand enough, you know, again, coming from a very, very low-income background. I didn't understand things like grants and loans. And, you know, I thought, oh, my God, there's no way I can get a loan. I mean, I can't even afford to pay for housing to go to school. I'm free. Right. So how in the world would I go sign paperwork to, uh, you know, to get a loan for, you know, $50,000 to go to school? So I just never did. And, you know, based on that, I knew that I was going to have to work extremely hard to overcome the lack of secondary education. So that's what I've, uh, that's what I've done pretty much my whole life is I've, I've worked multiple jobs. I've worked very, very hard at learning things on my own that I might have, you know, gotten ahead through college and so forth. And uh, uh, I've tried to be, uh, you know, just very... Uh, you know, proficient in certain certain fields, and IT became one of them. And believe it or not, coming full circle on this conversation, the one thing that actually drove me to uh, understanding computers was to enhance my gaming experience. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, the, the issue was is that, you know, if I had a game that I really wanted to play and it didn't work, well, guess what? I'm going to do anything and everything to make that game work. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I had to teach myself how to manipulate, you know, computers to the point of where I got what I wanted, which was usually the, the game to operate or, do, or the game to operate correctly if it wasn't working correctly, either by sound or video options or whatever. So, uh, you know, gaming actually drove me in a lot of ways uh, to the career that I'm in now, you know, which is very, very IT heavy. And uh, because I became so proficient with computers, uh, I ended up learning, you know, some other skill sets on computers, like video editing, uh, audio editing, 3D animation. And that actually led me to a, a separate career in advertising and marketing where I, I did uh, radio commercials, TV commercials, uh, script writing, copywriting, um, billboards, logo design, all kinds of stuff like that. So. I have a very, very heavy background in, in advertising and marketing, and that's why I actually, my, my daytime job is, uh, is such a bizarre hybrid. Most people are like, you're what? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you, you, work in, you work in advertising and IT for a living together? <laughs> Right, exactly. It's so, it's an odd combo. Yeah, it really is. It's uh, you know I use my right brain part of the day and my left brain the other part of the day. You know, it's like a little <laughs> bit of creative and a little bit analytical. So, um, so yeah, that's actually uh, quite a bit about me there. Um, you know, and obviously I'll I'll be happy to answer all kinds of other questions that you guys have. But you know, that's that's quite a bit about me personally. I'm sure I'll have more to say by the time this is over with. But Viridi, why don't you tell us about you? Man, I I can't top that, so I'm good. No, I'm so <laughs> Oh, you yeah. got plenty to tell. <laughs> well, I'm sure I do, but I uh, I don't have I'm not I, I don't have a fancy job. I don't have uh, any of that. So uh, yeah, but my... I got I got a few years on you, so it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But uh, my gaming history um, is pretty. That's pretty insane itself. Um, 
I've been holding a controller since I was three years old. My my grandparents, uh, before I was born in 1985, they purchased. They're always up on the technology, which is insane. Most grandparents, you wouldn't think that I, they, you would say that about them, but my grandparents are just absolutely insane when it comes to technology. They've always got the newest piece. They were really, you know, they were really good at sticking up on on what they what they believed and and um, and that was that you you had to be ahead. Um, yeah. So when the uh, when, when the Nintendo uh, you know the Nintendo Entertainment System came out onto the market, which was the the revitalization of the Nintendo world, um, they jumped on it. And I don't know if she I don't know if my grandmother actually played this game beforehand and knew she was going to want it, but she bought the Nintendo uh, for the game Tetris. <laughs> and I, I talked about this before. In uh, one of the previous episodes, I talked about how she was a damn Tetris world master almost. I, I, I didn't see how she could, you know, do, get these scores. But, you know, she she bought it beforehand. And when I when I was two or three, I guess my grandpa made the mistake of, of showing me, uh, hey, I bet you'd be able to play that other game that came with the NES. Uh, <laughs> so, so he popped in Super Mario Brothers. And... Um, you know, he he really he showed me he could only get to the second level, and he, he you know he showed me how to hold the controller. And at three years old, I, I barely remember any of this, but I still remember remember what I learned from it. And uh, you know, that's that, that I, I I couldn't get past the second level. Why? Because he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't get past it because I didn't want to show him up. I finally did figure out how to get past the, the second level at three, but you know, I did I just didn't want to. And uh, you know, eventually, I, I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, and I beat the game. I beat the game at three years old, <laughs> and yeah, I I've bet, been. I bet you didn't let's play that at three. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? That'd be that'd be epic, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't have anywhere to post it for another like what, fifteen, twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, but yeah, so um, ever since then, um, nothing nothing has interested me more um you know i i think i honestly think that if if that hadn't happened if my grandparents hadn't bought that nes i know i wouldn't be the same person i am today i came from a background of hardened football playing people my whole family they all are sports nuts i can't go over to the i can't go to the family reunion without you know somebody handing me you know as a matter of fact every christmas i get a sports dvd (laughs) They don't get the hint. They're like, you know what? He may be uh, 24 years old, but we're going to convert him yet. No, no, that's not how it works. I come from a very, a very, uh, you know, steadfast line of people where it's just like, if you're not doing what we like, you don't do anything. Um, and so coming from that background, I, I had a hard time gaming because, um, you know, any Christmas, any birthday where somebody would normally say, here's what I I want for Christmas and they get it, it would be like, no, you're not getting a game. That would be their answer. And I would have to argue why that was what I wanted, why that's what they should get me. And luckily, you know, I did, I did win them over quite a bit. So through the years I got, you know, my super Nintendo through fighting. I got my, my N64, my PlayStation. I even, I, for my fifth birthday, my first console I owned was an Atari 2600. And yeah. (laughs) And it, and I got, I got so awesomely lucky. No, but here's the thing. I got lucky. The thing came with like like fifty or sixty games. Oh jeez! You can't imagine how happy I was. Guess how many times I played it. <laughs> no I played idea. it. I played it three times. What? What happened? My parents would not let me play it. <laughs> they bought it, but they wouldn't let me play it. Um, that's just one. That's what I'm talking about. I had to fight. It was it was an honest battle to get to where I wanted to go. And you know. The, the, there's nothing more enjoyable to me than actually sitting down and talking games with people. That's why I love this podcast. This is what I love to do. It's it's experience something and then talk about the experience, and that has always been my passion. Um, I am uh, I'm I'm, twi- I'm I'll be 24 in August. Um, I am also expecting a child. Anakin just had his. I'm expecting. I will have a child hopefully in the first week of August, if not a little sooner. Um, I've been married for uh, for four. What four and a half years almost? No, four four years and a couple months. Um, and uh, you know, I, I I can't say that I can't say that I'm not just 
all damned excited about being a dad. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, it gives me a chance to, to, to raise my child the way I thought I should have been raised in, in, in the gaming environment. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very excited to, uh, to see where this, the, the games are going uh, in my child's life. I can't wait to see, to, to really teach my child the values that I learned by playing these old school games before I had a chance to play the new ones. I mean, even when, you know, even when the Super Nintendo came out, I got to see the graphics, but I didn't get to hold a controller. You know, I got, you know, I got to, uh, I, I had to still play my NES and, uh, that's fine. You know, I, I really did learn a, a value in retro gaming. Um, it doesn't matter about the graphics. It doesn't matter about the sounds. I mean, you just you gotta love the content, you know. It's all about the gameplay. That's what it boils yeah. down to. Oh yeah, the, you know, I, I have I have over a hundred and fifty, you know, uh, next gen titles uh, to play, but I more than most of the time find myself sitting at my computer with an emulator. <laughs> playing all of my old favorites. That's me, okay? And and there is nothing better than turning on uh, Final Fantasy VI or, or, or you know, uh, as it was in America, Final Fantasy III, or uh, turning on Mario, uh, Super Mario World, Super Mario All-Stars, and just trudging through those games. There's nothing better than that to me. And um, as a gamer, I can say definitely, yes, I'm a huge retro gamer. Um, but I love everything. There's only there's only a few types of games that I won't touch. MMOs being one that I haven't yet. Uh, you know that one I'm not too. You know I am very hesitant because the thing about MMOs, you know, you've really got to be careful. You can't. That's not one of those games you pick up for an hour and then put down. Right. Um, that's the, the biggest problem. The thing is, is that I'm such a passionate gamer, I can't do that. Because I know I would love those games. I know I'd get addicted. But I can't just play that game. I have to play others. And uh, I play so many other games, so many new games, so much variety, that that would, that would definitely hinder that, and I would feel like I'd feel pretty bad. So... Uh, the only other genre, re- genre really, is uh, sports sims. I, I can't, I, I can't stand them. The thing is, is I just can't stand sports. Period. And you know that was partially on the, on the way I was brought up as well. Uh, but you know, I'm not saying the games are bad or anything. I just personally don't like them myself. Yeah, I've never uh, really been a sport. You know, it's like one of those things that if you're going to play a sports game, just go outside with the real ball. <laughs> yeah, go play catch. You know, go go play some neighborhood sports. I mean, there's tons of flag football teams. But you know, that's the other. You know, it's like I, I play <laughs> games as a way of a, a escapism. You know, and and if it's just too realistic, if it's something I can literally do, you know, outside, then uh, you know they. You know, it's it's like why don't I just go do that outside? Why would I play a virtual <laughs> version of that? You know, I think it's just so weird when I see like hunting games. Uh, like yeah. you know, deer hunter, and you know, or or you know, a uh, football game or whatever. To me, that that's something I, I actually have the ability to go experience firsthand. What you know, I don't you know, I can't go to to the world of Mass Effect. You know, I have to play that. Exactly. You know, but if I can do well, it in real life, I just choose not to do it in a, in a virtual world. Well, you know, Cabela is a way to keep our uh, it's a way to keep our senses active during the down season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what it is. <laughs> God. <laughs> Keep it you sharp, really right? God, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much me. You know, I uh, right now I am in between jobs. Um, I, I'm looking right now for a for a job as we speak. Uh, right now, my only source of income is YouTube. Um, uh, so that's one reason you see a lot of me on here. You know, got to keep that coming. Uh, I'm also, envious it's- personally. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get up every day and be at my office at eight o'clock in the morning. And so when you guys see me, uh, you know, in Central Standard Time, if you see me <laughs> at yeah, like exactly. midnight or one a.m., especially during the week, you know, you should be telling me go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's that's. I think Zombie was doing that the other day. God, she's like, hey, Annika need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. that was a bad, bad impression. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's my, like, what? Like, it's my only Asian impression. My bad. <laughs> God. <laughs> she's she's going she's gonna to have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I took her to some booty. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so... Uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much me. I, I you know, I do that. Uh, that's my presence is on YouTube, and and uh, I really enjoy what I do. I started my YouTube career. Let's get onto the YouTube career. So how okay. how we started? I I actually did honestly start uh, my YouTube uh, back in uh, let's say 2007. I I basically. Uh, it was when, uh, and you might know about these, but they're called Mario ROM hacks. It was back when they first started, uh, and um, a Super Mario World Central just uh, just booted up, and I was completely fascinated with this concept. So, if you don't know, a ROM hack is where there's a program that basically allows you to take a Super Mario World ROM and it takes all of the ingredients from the ROM and allows you to build your own levels, build your own game. And so they took Super Mario World and they would build their own Super Mario games out of them. And it was like playing a brand... If you got a good one, like a Brutal Mario or something like that, it was like playing a brand new Mario World. Wow. And it was just like, oh, this is so cool. Well, then people started getting more creative and you might have heard uh, Anakin of Kaizo Mario. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I have actually. So Kaizo Mario was created by some Japanese dude to piss his friend off, and it's basically the hardest ROM hack in the world. I mean, pr- well, it was until people started getting ridiculous with it. <laughs> it's a, it's a very legitimate hack that you know, it's not uh, it's not uh, too bad. I mean, it's it's pretty legit. But he did beat it without using save states, and that was pretty insane. Um, so anyway, I jumped on that man. I was like, this is awesome. So I started posting videos about rom hacks and i i how, met, how long ago was this in like 2007 <laughs> wow yeah i started posting videos and kind of uh, reviews about these things and i got about 2000 subs uh, at the time it didn't really matter to me I, I wasn't really worried about it but then something happened that really pissed me off and I'm okay talking about this because the, the son of a gun took the video down. But it really it hit me wrong. It was the first time I had ever been trolled. Um, and this guy, basically, these two kids made a video mocking me. <laughs> and they, what they did was they took an episode of a Let's Play I was doing, and they started mocking me. While, so it was kind of like a commentary on top of a commentary. And they just mocked me the whole time. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I was so destroyed by this because I couldn't believe somebody would literally... I mean, because it wasn't just funny. I mean, they were trying to be very hurtful. And I couldn't believe that somebody could be that horrible. You know what I mean? I was just like, oh, I was torn up. So I literally closed my account. I was that, I was that pissed off. I was just like upset. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not even going to do this anymore. And this was really before I had any understanding of what a troll was, you know. I didn't I didn't realize that people on this site were just going to be mean just for the heck of it, you know. I really <laughs> did Welcome to YouTube, right? <laughs> exactly. That was my first slap in the in in the in, in the pants, but I I <laughs> You know what? Just move on. <laughs> I almost said something else. I had to change it. <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh, if you don't know, we try not to curse on here, but <laughs> but it slips out every now and then. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So uh, you know, I I was like later on, I I I started watching more and more let's plays, and I was like, you know what? Forget it. I forget it. I am going to do it. I I don't care what anyone else thinks. So I started up a channel called Viridia Guru Twenty Two, and a lot of you guys ask me where I got the name from. I am a very I am very avid on writing. I love creative writing, and I I, I started writing a short story um, about a world that I titled that I that I called Viridia. That was the name of the actual planet, um, and the, the 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 title of the short story was Skies Over Viridia. And so I just you know I felt like I, I strongly I was I was really into my own short story, and I was like you know I'll just I'll just use something that I created, you know, and put it as the beginning of my my uh, name because it used to be final fantasy guru <laughs> ff guru back when i was a kid and i wasn't that creative you know what i mean i was like i love final fantasy so i just changed it you know and it kind of just stuck um and and so you know th- that's 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 what i did i opened that channel i um 
I started off by uh, I was like, okay, I got to figure out ways to get my video content on YouTube. This is before I realized I could use the tool that I was, you know, p- uploading to to actually figure out how to do. So I started off as a kid. I documented all of my gameplay on VHS tapes. I did. I already did this already. Oh my god! What you? you Fantastic! <laughs> I did. I've got. I've got tons of VHS tapes with my gameplay on it, and I, I. So I already knew that I could record it with my VHS player. So I'm sitting there wondering, how do I get this to a media format? I just really didn't know. So my parents had bought a DVD recorder, and I was like, oh wow! So you basically put your videotape in one side, and it records to a disc. So, oh, so, Jesus. so I was like, okay, this is a good idea. So I did that. I would record to the VHS. I took it from the disc, and it looked abysmal. I was like, God, I can't do this. So then I just decided to 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 look at a DVD recorder, which they also had. So I was like, hey, do you mind if I borrow that for a night or two and just kind of try it out, see what you, you know, see if it works for me? And so the first uh, Elder Scrolls videos on my channels on my channel is from that. Those were ripped directly from a DVD. And that took to upload twelve episodes took me about four days' work. Uh, ripping the ripping process took forever. You got to understand, I was using a, sh- uh, a, a crap computer. <laughs> it took forever, and I was like, "This just isn't cutting it." So I was at work one day. I used to work at Radio Shack, and I saw something called a dazzle. And this is what a, a dazzle is. What it is pretty much only used. I can only imagine. For what we use it for as Let's Plays. I, I can't imagine somebody actually using this uh, much for what it's intended for because of how complicated it is. It's not something like, you know, oh, Grandma wants to put the VHS tapes on it onto her computer. And you plug it in and it works. Now, you got to do a lot of, you know, a lot of tinkering. So I purchased this thing and, you know, that's what got me going with the, the Let's Plays. And I started, uh, I started doing a few of those. And uh, I got kind of kind of tired of that because I had a lot of technical issues with that damn dazzle. And then I purchased a hop hog, and that's when I heard about a contest. And I was like, hmm. Now, now, can- how did you hear about the contest? I heard I heard about it through NGT, and I heard I was literally I just purchased my hop hog. Okay, hadn't recorded a thing with it. And I was like sitting there trying to. I was just going, God dang! I just blew two hundred dollars on this machine, and I can't justify the money. I can't justify the purchase because I really I, like. I'm going to get three or four views a video, and uh, you know it's not going to it's not going to pay off. It's going to be. I just spent three hundred dollars on a hobby, and um, <laughs> I'm not going to get anything out of it. Yeah, that's a chunk of money. I felt the same yeah. way. Yeah, and so um, literally it was kind of like fate. I was like, uh, and I turn on my YouTube, and there's there's a spider bite, Daryl sitting there, and he, uh, you know, he's like, oh, we got a contest going at NGT, and I'm like, well, hell, you know, I'm like, I'm a better commentator than any of them. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, all right, let's do it. So I I put I, I the first thing I recorded was a Halo gameplay. I threw it on there. The rest is history. Um, you know, I won the contest and I, I have a partnership now with, uh, TGS and, um, I'm extremely, uh, TGS, TGN. I'm very excited about, I, I'm partnered with both channels. I'm very excited about that as well. And, um, you know, I'm here to help TGN grow. I'm here to help in any way I can with any of the, uh, with any of the, you know, stuff that they have coming at me it's a new channel they need some some elite uh elite people on here and that's why i brought you know we, we me anakin and i brought our team over here um and anakin and i actually met that's how we met we met into this in this contest and um that's right you know we we've become good friends ever since absolutely yeah i mean it was uh and that's basically, you know, I can cut out everything from 2007 up until last year, <laughs> yeah. uh, because believe it or not, I mean, you know, I, the thing is for me, it was, um, you know, very, very similar. Uh, I, like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I've been doing radio spots, TV commercials, things like that. So I, I do have somewhat of an announcer voice. I've, I've done these, you know, this, this kind of thing. Uh, you know, most of my life, um, I, I even did some, you know, acting and drama and other stuff, you know, along the way to kind of 
prep myself. I, I took speech classes to kind of, you know, do various things with my voice and be able to manipulate it. And uh, at one point, I was even thinking about doing voiceovers for anime. Uh, you know, I wanted, <laughs> yeah. to, I wanted to do that kind of I wanted to, to get into, you know, movie trailers and, you know, all that stuff. And I obviously my, my voice isn't nearly good enough for that for that area, you know, and I don't mean the, the anime. Obviously, anybody's voice is better than most people who sub, who, who dub anime. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, I agree. Hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh Jesus, God, who is you know who is who are these voices belong to? Hey, go on, it's Krillin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just so. Krillin bring it. <laughs> So yeah. So anyway, you know, the funny thing is, is I'd never done any any game commentary, and uh, there was a a couple of buddies of mine who were really hardcore YouTubers. I mean, they spent most of their free time watching YouTube, uh, watching you know various directors. They they kind of saw things build up, like uh, you know the Machinima respawn, and they they watched NGT turn into a uh, a pretty big channel. They they were there early on. And I had these friends that just that I gamed with constantly, but they just kept saying, "Dude, there's this contest going on. You you've got to do it. You you've got the voice. You've got the ability to entertain people and and keep people engaged in your speech, and you've got the gaming skills to go with it. So go do it." And I said, "Ah, you guys are crazy. I don't you know I don't I don't know anything about this whole YouTube commentary nonsense." Uh, this is silly. I'm not gonna do that. That's that's for kids, you know. And uh, <laughs> that's for kids. That's for kids. You know, it's like tricks. That's for kids. So, <laughs> so anyway, they they hounded me, and uh, one one friend of mine in particular, uh, he goes by Big Dog V65 on YouTube, and he is a very very good personal friend of mine, and he just hounded me to no end. Uh, about this and he told me about the contest and and him and several other people just kept saying over and over and over I finally and and, you know this was this was so early on I I finally went over there and just looked to even see what game commentary was like because at the time I didn't even really watch YouTube that that much you know I mean I I I played more games than I watched people play games right so I just was like okay well what are you supposed to talk about I mean what who cares it's like in the game more and more interesting than somebody talking about it so I I went and looked around and I, I looked at this contest and I actually entered the contest late I watched all you know I, the, the contest was open to entries for I think it was like maybe a month and I entered the last week of the contest because I, I looked over at all the I looked at the three or four weeks worth of, of stuff that had been entered and I was like, my God, this stuff is awful. <laughs> So I thought, geez, you know, I've got to get in and try this. And I said, I've never, you know, but then I read some of the, you know, the qualifiers to get into the contest. And you had to have a, a YouTube channel that had been oh, you yeah. know, around for like more than a year or something. And you had to have, you know, you had to have examples of your game commentary and all this other crap. And I just thought, you know, I don't have any of that. But then I looked at my YouTube channel, which I created with my Gmail account. You know, years ago, and I was like, "Oh, well, okay, I, I meet that specification." I never uploaded anything, but I did have an active channel, and uh, you know, I didn't have anything else to go by. And they said, "You know, people are going to be judged by their past gaming, uh, you know, gaming commentary and gaming history and so forth." And um, so I was like, "Oh man, this is a long shot," but. I said, "Well, what the heck? I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good at games, and I still like to watch them and share them with my friends. So I'm gonna buy a hop hog. So I bought it on Amazon, got it shipped to me within two days. The contest was going to end in like five days, <laughs> and oh, I said, wow. I said, all right, let me try this. So I put out. I'd never done it before. Put out a a, a game of Modern Warfare 2 when I was doing a free for all match. I I did. I mean, literally, I turned on the mic." And I was like, hey, everybody, uh, this is Anakin um, talking about Modern Warfare 2. Here's some of the things that I do in the game to win. That was it. And I did it. On, I, I didn't plan it. I didn't script it. I did it live into my mic and uh, hit record one time, synced it up, put it on there, and I won the contest. <laughs> there you go. So, you, go. Um, you know, and it was just crazy. And really what kept me from getting up to uh, to your level, Brad, you know, when it came to actually being partnered on with the secondary level um, was they uh, they actually told me it was because I had no prior history and they didn't know how, you know, how much mm-hmm. dedication I had to, to doing so. Right. And I it, enjoyed it so much, you know, I've been doing it ever since. 
yeah, it, do, it does come down to being dedicated and, and yeah, you know, that's what I talked about in the beginning of that contest is like, that's, that's the one thing I think that, that pushed me was I actually had, you know, full playthroughs going and going and going. They could see that. Yeah, you had three um, years of content to, to backlog if you started in 07. Well, I, I started my original channel in 07. Well, true, yeah. Um, I, I did. God, that other channel had a lot of content as well, you know, because you know, those Mario hacks... Jesus, you could spend all day just just hanging out and, and playing those, and and you know they're so easy to record. You didn't need three hundred dollars worth of equipment. You had you had it all right there. It was a fraps, you know, running fraps, and then you're you're done. You know, it's right. the, it was so easy. So so the transition was a lot. You know, I get asked all the time how I started, and that's that's honestly how it happened. You know, I you get you got to get your name out there. You got to get lucky. Uh, it's it's a it's part luck, part skill, part. Uh, endurance yeah you know yeah um you got to just keep going with it and um you know what really hurts me is i know that i can be i could be more popular probably than i am i have a hard time though uh just selling out <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> i honestly do I, I i feel that if that you know if i if i if i were to get one of these freaking youtube bots and i see it happen all the time that's how i know they work these YouTube bots that will go around, they send friend requests automatically, they send messages automatically. You know, that's how people get popular. They sure. they send these messages. I get spammed with them all the time, but, you know, friend requests and stuff like that, they, they really are the key to making it big here. You know, the more friends you have, the more people get to see you in the, in the, in the friend box. If you think about it, um, if you go to my channel, there's a channel called CTFXE or something like that. They were the first person to ever send me a friend request. Now, every time somebody goes to my channel, they see their channel on mine. And the bigger I get, the more people see their channel. Okay. So, you know, this is this is a huge part of advertising, as well as commenting. You know, commenting on videos every single day, on popular videos. Saying a witty comment that you know will get to the top, you know, on, on the comment uh, thumbs up list. People will start seeing you. You know, these are all things that you can do to become more popular. Um, I just, I just don't do them. Um, but you know, I, I, I am, I am very happy that we, that we did uh, go through with this contest. It didn't work out in the end, but we got to meet. We, we, we met each other. We, we, we created a, a very awesome team of, of individuals here. And, and uh, if you don't know, our team name is Control Shock. We, uh, we post uh, pretty much anything, really. We've got a very wide variety uh, of gaming content, and we're bringing some of that to TGN um, through, uh, you know, we've got Mortal Kombat. We've got, we've got uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and luckily, in a, fu- in a future episode, we're going to have all of Control Shock on to uh, to kind of talk about what they do, so it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, that's going to be I, uh, you know, Control Shock is something that's fairly new. We've got our own show here on TGN as well. Uh, be on the lookout for some of uh, some of the guys uh, showing up and with some of the content there. And and like you know, like Brad was saying, I mean, we've got so many different um, you know different players in our group, and we're, and we're multi-platform. We've got PC, Xbox, uh, PS3, even some. Uh, uh, DS, Wii, and retro stuff, you know, so I mean, we've got so much different, you know, content out there among our group, and yet, you know, one of the, one of the factors that brings us all together is, uh, you know, the, the first person shooter uh, out there, which is obviously Call of Duty, the big one, you know, that everybody plays and everybody's interested in, that's one of the things that kind of brings us all together, we all right. play it. And, um, you know, that's how uh, a lot of us actually got to know each other through uh, the contest is uh, that was obviously the big game to get you out there and noticed. And, right. And um, so it's, it's exciting. You know, we're, we're very excited. A lot of the guys with Control Shock, you're going to meet <coughs> through the podcast. You're going to uh, get to know them through obviously their own content that they're adding to uh, TGN as well. So be on the lookout for them. Yeah. And also... Guys, I do impress upon you to follow Control Shock. We do a lot of stuff together, and we have a group of some of the funniest guys. I mean, <laughs> it is so funny to get us. I mean, when, when we all get together, some of the most random crap happens. We live stream a whole bunch. So if you see that Control Shock is live streaming on, on, on TGN, please go. I, 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 I think you'll enjoy <laughs> it if you go. It's, it's definitely something to, to watch. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell... That's Anakin and Viridia. Absolutely. Uh, 
Yeah, it's it's there's not much. I mean, you know, of course, there's all kinds of stuff, and you 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 have every every uh, you can you can ask me anything. Is just remember to email it at podcast down the scope at gmail, and I I will respond. I if you ask me a personal question about uh, you know something about how I got started here on YouTube or in gaming, I definitely will respond as well as Anakin. I know absolutely. Uh, and we we just we we, we welcome you aboard. Um, if you if you're new uh, for sure, and we want you to know that you're just as welcome as anyone else on here, as as any of our hard scopers that we've got going, and we hope you become a hard scoper. <laughs> hard sco- Indeed, yeah, you better <laughs> explain that. We we have created a name. Oh, actually, no, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Create- else, yeah, there was a. I I wish I knew his name right now because he was actually he is a, one of our hard scopers, but he was the one that came up with the term, and I thought it was brilliant. So basically. We have an hour-long podcast, and there are people, uh, you know, that obviously they, they they watch the podcast to completion. They do what I t- I said in the beginning. They set it in the background. They do something while they listen, and it becomes a regimen every Sunday. Um, and then you've got those people that they're like they listen. They're they're idiots. They listen to five or ten minutes. They turn it off. <laughs> They're not getting this far. They're not going to be insulted. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's true. <laughs> but, but basically, the ones who watch it all the way through are considered hard scopers. That's and right. the ones who turn it off are considered quick scopers. <laughs> and we all know how everyone loves a good quick scoper. <laughs> exactly. Everyone just loves it when they get quick scoped. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, so that's the that that's that's pretty much what that is. So we we hope that you guys become hard scopers. I hope you listen this far. If you didn't, uh, you know, uh, you know, I hope we get you next week. But but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, um, and can, that's pretty much that's pretty much it about us. We we you know we're not we're not you know some movie star with like the insanely you know super interesting lives. I know, right? But, um. <laughs> You know, we got we at least we got something to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that's and you know the thing is, is that you know we we get asked a lot of questions about ourselves all the time, and you know some of our other group in Control Shock. They, let me tell you, there's some, there's pretty amazing uh, people I- involved in our group too. I don't want to speak for them, but we've got some uh, uh, some people who are extremely talented in their own ways. Uh, you know, we've oh, got yeah. a. I mean, we've got a, a, a gymnast among our group that is just <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah. And we've got, uh, you know, uh, we've got, we're actually multinational too. We've got people from uh, uh, several countries, uh, not yep. just the U.S. And, um, uh, you know, we've got, uh, uh, you know, multi gender as well. We, you know, we've got, we've got a girl. <laughs> that, that's true. There is a we girl got- among <laughs> us. <laughs> As crazy as that may sound, a girl gamer. I know they're they're few and far between, but we've got one. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's it's something. I mean, you know, and and we welcome anybody to you know to come to come and and participate in our live streams. We talk to everybody. Uh, you know, if if we're if we're gaming, we do try and and have open lobbies and game with our fans and whatnot. Absolutely. Anybody's welcome. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just it's just a great all around group of people. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely watch out for us on here. And if you if you already know about us, you know you can second the notion. I know that Indeed. there's a lot of you guys out there that just you guys are really if if you're not if you don't love what I do, you don't like what Anakin does, you like what one of us does. And uh, when we come together, it really does. It just feels like a team. It feels right. Absolutely. Um. So so I'll tell you what we got a little bit of time if I'm not mistaken. So let's answer an email. Okay. Let's do an email. Let's uh let's see what we got here. I, I'm kind of mail. You've got mail. Answer it now. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, this is a quick one I wanted to talk about, um, and this is this is kind of along the lines of a let's play. If you don't know what a let's play is, it's basically a gameplay with commentary over it. And I'm not going to spend much time on this, but I do want to point it out because uh, it's something that I've been going through. Um, it's from uh, Arcadius X. Uh, he says, "Hey." Uh, I'm a huge fan of the podcast, and I always enjoy listening to your perspectives on different game topics, so I felt like I could contribute with a topic. My question is, what is your idea of a Let's Play and a Let's Player? This question came to mind while I was watching one of Viridia's Let's Play videos. Uh, my personal opinion is that a Let's Player and his or her channel should consist of games that the other ugh, that the player chooses to play. LPers who do this usually have very interesting facts to talk about regarding the game they're showing, as I noticed in Brad's Braid Let's Play. If a lot of people ask for 
said let's play or to let's play a new game, they should do they shouldn't do it unless they really want to, knowing that they will be talking about the game itself for the entirety to keep viewers entertained. Um, thank you, Arcadius. I really I really appreciate that. And, you know, you're right. I, I do agree with you. However, there are two types of Let's Players in this YouTube world. Um, there are YouTubers who do mainly new uh, games they're familiar with. And then there are YouTubers that branch out and they do what are called blind Let's Plays. And they do, um, you know, they do games that, that, that are new. And they do them because they're new and they want you to get that first experience. I, myself, am both. And... Um, I, I, I do both, and I do agree. While I do agree with you, Arcadius, what you're saying, uh, it goes along with me uh, personally as an LP. -er. Um, I am better at doing LPs that I know about rather than ones, or I enjoy them more than, than doing blind ones. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make them better. Um, I think that, I think that yes, a, a, a Let's Player does have to enjoy what he's doing, but think about it this way. I didn't enjoy Mortal Kombat but it was still considered one of my most entertaining Let's Plays because of the rage. <laughs> so, just because a Let's Player doesn't enjoy what he's playing doesn't mean that the Let's Play is necessarily going to suffer. Um, well, so I just, and again, it goes back to the commentator, though, just like you're saying. Exactly, exactly. It goes all back to him. Me, myself, I, I've been... I've been thinking about, you know, I, I here's the thing. Like I told you today, I played Demon Souls, man. I played it for four and a half hours, oh and I didn't God. realize it. <laughs> Live streaming, I was just like, oh, shit. I don't normally even play that long in one sitting if I'm just gaming. So I was like, holy crap. And it went by that quick. However, a game like Infamous, which I'm not 100% passionate about. I'm let's playing it. I can be playing that for 45 minutes, and it seems like I've been playing it for an hour and a half. And I'm like, God, hurry up. You know, hurry up. Come on. I just want to get this mission done. I want to get this done. You know, and it has a lot to do not just with the game, but the, the glitches and all that stuff that go into it. It, it definitely does hinder me. Um, and, and the game really doesn't have a lot to talk about, which, which Arcadius brought up in his, in his comment. It doesn't have a whole lot to talk about. Braid, you're doing a puzzle the whole time. So when you're playing it, you're sitting there going, okay, you need to do this and this and this and this and this. You never run out of a commentary. You're always excited about it because you know, you know the puzzles. You know how you're going to tell them how to do the puzzles. And you like the story about the game. But with Infamous, the story is told... And then it's do a mission, and then it's over. This is why doing open world games most of the time isn't a good idea. There's a lot of downtime, and I think that's more of what it is rather than the way I portrayed it. I get into these, I get into these fussy moods sometimes, and that's why it came off that way. I was, <laughs> I was being a little baby, okay, and I was just like, dang, I don't want to do this, you know. I was being a little whiny, a whiner about it, and um, that's pretty much that's pretty much how it goes, man. Um, I do I do agree with you though I, I, I like both kinds of let's plays so um, me personally I'm just kind of both and uh, I shouldn't sell out and just do the new game I should do more of what I know and love and I will I sure will so Arcadius thank you so much for that comment I really appreciate it um, awesome. I know that I know I know that Anakin isn't a let's player so he really probably doesn't have anything. <laughs> I, I really, you know, the thing is, is I'm not, I'm not a Let's Player. I actually uh, tried it a little bit, but you know, it, it's like I just found myself not speaking and uh, and only listening to the game. You know, I, I just, and, and it just turns out like it, it's just at that point you're just watching me play the game and I forget to talk. There's like a long, extended times in my in my uh, you know very short uh, career of Let's Plays that I, I was just sitting there. I'm just like, wow, okay, cool. All right, what do I need to do? And I would never, I would just forget to talk for like, you know, two or three minutes. So my which, hat's off to Let's Players, honestly. Which, I, which, I which brings us to our next uh, comment from Ryan. He says, Anakin, when are you going to finish Portal 2 Let's Play with Verdi? I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yes, I know. Now that I finally, I finally got my life settled down a little bit, you and I can actually make some time to finish that damn Portal 2. You know, we're going to, we're going to be celebrating Portal 3's release when, <laughs> by the time we're done with the Portal 2. Uh, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? We actually are. We are going to finish that. We're gonna. We're gonna do. We may even do some of that live. I, I want to maybe live stream some of the, gonna, uh, the ending. There game. you go. There you go. There we go. And you know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually throw all this weight on your back and say <laughs> I am literally good to go at any time, any day. Oh so, crap! <laughs> if you guys have any more questions about Portal Two, they should all be directed at Anakin. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hang on, let me pull up my Google Calendar and see if I can make some time. I'll pencil this in. Let's just schedule it. It's like every Thursday for the next month, we, we, we play two hours of Portal 2. There we Indeed. go. Indeed, yeah. Honestly, it's not a bad idea, you know? <laughs> I mean, we schedule the podcast. We might as well schedule Jeez. Portal. Now we've been doing this fine for, <laughs> what, how many weeks? Jeez. Yeah, 24 weeks? 24 weeks, straight man. weeks. We haven't missed. I know. Well, not one podcast has been... Not on there for the week. That's right. It may have been a day late, but it's not never been not there. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so our last one, I'm sure we have. How much time we get? Do we have a little bit more time? Yeah, we got a little more time. Okay. So our last one, and I want. I don't want to make this like a 40 minute long discussion, which we could. Uh -oh. But it's from. Uh, <laughs> it's from Mewtwo for life, and he says, "Hey guys, I just wanted to ask." Um, I just wanted to ask you what you consider the greatest accomplishments you've had in gaming are. Everyone who plays games has has those moments that you remember achieving something you thought was almost impossible. For me, one of my accomplishments, one of the, mo the accomplishments I remember most vividly is completing survival mode on Capcom versus SNK2, beating every character in the game, including all boss characters, on one health bar. <laughs> Whew, that's oh, insanity. He, he does say with an ever-decreasing amount of health regeneration. So I guess... I think he meant increasing. Right. Um, whenever I think back to that final fight, I can still feel just as tense and anxious as I did that night. W uh, he would like to hear what, what our thoughts are on the topic. So, Anakin, what was your most just accomplished gaming feat? Oh, jeez, man. You Guys, know... <laughs> this is probably going to be a game you've never freaking heard of before. <laughs> You know, sadly, um, you know, it probably will be, actually, because uh, some of the, you know, God, man, I'll tell you, I, I think one of the, you know, this is so obscure, uh, everybody's going to be like, what? What the hell is Anakin talking about? There was a, um, a standalone expansion for Homeworld called Homeworld Cataclysm. This was a 3D RTS. I actually, you know, generally didn't have any difficulty playing these games. I, I love, by the way, I absolutely love Homeworld, Homeworld Cataclysm, and Homeworld 2. I thought they were some of the best RTSs out there. And sadly, because the RTS genre, for the most part, is dead, unless you play StarCraft, I don't ever think they're going to do a Homeworld 3. But God, I hope they do someday. But anyway, there was a, there was a mission that was just so ungodly, okay? I mean, I spent... I spent a week trying to beat this one mission near the end of Homeworld Cataclysm. And if you can imagine a planet that has a full other, you know, sphere around it made of ships, okay, <laughs> made of, of ships guarding it, you had your one ship. The ship you, is sphere. You, <laughs> that's <right>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. A Shafir. Shafir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you had one ship and you had to go in to the middle of this, destroy something, and get back out alive, okay? This was, I mean, it was just so overwhelming. There was, I, I just felt like there had to be a trick. There had to be something that, you know, there, there was a way to draw them away or, you know, whatever. No, you just had to use brute force and you had to understand the way your ship operates, you had to understand the interface of the game, and you had to really just be, like, I mean, just be on top of your game to get through this mission. And I played it for probably about a week straight uh, to, to utter failure every time. Mm -hmm. And one of my greatest, like, it was like one of those moments where it's like, I got away, I destroyed the, the, the you know, I did the task, I finished the mission, and it, it crossed the screen, it said success with a next mission button under it. Oh, and I yeah. literally just stood up in front of my monitor, threw my hands up, and my chair went flying, and I was like, yes, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I did it! Damn it! <laughs> I beat you, game developers! <laughs> So, you know, that I mean again, that's really obscure, but let me tell you, those moments and obviously there's there's thousands of those moments, but that one I just remember so vividly because it just it, it became an obsession until I until I beat that mission. And believe it or not, you, you know, the, the the further the missions went, the, they didn't they, you know, there was about three or four more missions after that and they weren't even that hard compared to that one, you know? Oh like, yeah. God, I know. Dude. I know how that goes. I uh so What about you? Tell us about yours. Okay, well, I've got a lot, but I'll, <laughs> no, I'll you gotta start. you gotta give us the one. <laughs> I know, but it's 
Can I give two? Can I give a recent one and then like an overall? All right. Okay, so recently, I got I beat. <laughs> I know this is gonna sound like like kind of weird, but I beat the Dark World Hell in Super Meat Boy every level. <laughs> and if you've ever played Super Meat Boy. It, oh, and I got A-plus ranks on all of them. If you've ever played Super Meat Boy, then you know what I'm talking about. This game is is a troll. It is the one of the hardest games I have ever played in my life, and I, I'm loving every minute of it. Anyway, that's that's the most recent one. But the one that, that is honestly standing out the most for me was beating Demon Souls and beating... Um, Ninja Gaiden for the uh, NES. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Ninja Gaiden. Oh my god. I know I know that's 3, but damn it, I got more I got more than that, but those are the two. Like Demon Souls is one of the hardest games ever made. Ninja Gaiden is just unforgivingly stupid. Um and I beat them both. And those that that's amazing. I mean, it it takes a lot of patience to really just you know dedicate yourself and you know i find if a game i i i really used to hate hard games i do hate stupid hard games but when it comes to a game that is is challenging and you know it it really does suck you in like like meat boy does meat boy gives you no chance to stop once you die you're back in it's like might as well go again you're standing there dead might as well go again you're standing there and just keeps doing that over and over and over and over (laughs) it's never like game over continue it's like no i don't want to continue it never gives you that option and and they did it perfectly and it makes you keep playing this level that seems impossible literally until the end the best part about meat boy is that it shows once you're done with the level it replays the level but it shows all of your failed attempts as well oh god (laughs) so you literally get to sit there and like bask you get to take a breather and watch yourself like, oh, I just sound like a hick there. Watch yourself. <laughs> you get to watch yourself. You get to watch yourself. For, but you get to watch yourself fail over and over and over. And then you get to see that one meat boy doing so good and then make it to the end. And they reward you for it. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden doesn't do that. It's just ungodly. If you haven't played Ninja Gaiden for the NES, try it out. It's not easy. Now, some, a personal goal that I want to achieve is to actually beat super ghouls and ghosts because i just oh, recently geez. saw how hard that game is and That's i am considered a, one of the hardest games ever made yeah oh yeah yeah easily it, 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 it and ninja gaiden are definitely two of the most unforgiving games ever created and i love to beat hard games i'm very i'm a huge fan of it if they're insanely hard i like to try and you know d- you know despite what my personality gives off in my videos i'm not actually a hard hard rager when it comes to heart to, to difficulty, I normally keep my cool for a while. Uh, you know, if something keep if I keep messing up, I get mad at myself most of the time, not the game. Um, but then again, you got Demon Souls, which is just oh god, yeah. <laughs> have you ever played Demon Souls, Anakin? Let me tell you, I have some friends of mine that play it, and they told me, oh yeah, yeah, you need to play it. It's pretty cool. It's very easy going, relaxed. You can, you'll love it. <laughs> and I, I said, oh cool. Let me let me check it out online. The initial, sh- the initial searches for Demon Souls was like, oh my god, hardest game ever. And I'm like, oh, you <laughs> assholes. I am not going to play this damn game. I have watched it. I- it does actually look pretty cool. And yeah. you know they announced the sequel for it. But after I found out it was just so damn frustrating, I decided to avoid it. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. So this game was out for a whole year before I even looked at it. Well, okay, before I touched it. And I sat there and I looked at it and I'm like, okay. Every single review I've ever seen, they're like, it's hard. Not just hard, but it is very hard. But, and then there's always in every review, every video, there's always that but on the end. But, Uh it's rewarding, and when you fail, you never feel cheated. You always know that you messed up. So when you have to restart, you go back in knowing, okay, now I know what to do. And this game becomes about memory. It becomes about understanding the mechanics and all this stuff, as well as leveling your character up. So basically, why it's so hard if you don't know about it, it's you, if you die, you drop all of your currency. Now, this is currency for weapons, upgrades, repairs, and leveling. It's one, it's one currency. There's no experience and money. It's just one deal. You drop it, and you have one chance to reclaim it. So if you dropped it at the end of the level, you have to restart the whole level 
all the enemies respawn. Everything that troubled you before, you still have to face, but now you have to get back to where you were and get it again. And you have to prepare for these bosses. And the thing is, is you don't go into a boss fight and win your first time. If you do, you're very lucky or you looked at a guide. You go into that boss fight, you know you're going to die, and you just know, okay, I need to learn as much as I can this first time so that when I come in again, I can take them on. It's a very different gaming experience than you've ever experienced before. And it is most definitely one of the most rewarding achievements I have ever accomplished in beating that game, not just once, but twice on the game plus mode, uh, which gets harder. Jesus. (laughs) And yeah, so I beat it again. And um, I have to say, it's one of my favorite games just because of the respect I gained for that feeling. And I'm live streaming it right now as we speak. I'm not not, not right now, but that's what I'm live streaming. (laughs) If you see me live streaming, that's what I'm doing. Uh, is playing Demon Souls. I live streamed it for four freaking hours today. Oh, so um, definitely, if you haven't heard of it, check out my live stream as well on uh, Justin TV. It's Fruity Guru Twenty Two. Well, uh, I've, got, I've got one other accomplishment that is like way again. This is this isn't obscure, but it's again kind of like a a novelty uh, accomplishment. But um, I I can uh, I I finally was so happy <laughs> that I did um, and you're not going to understand any of this because you'll play it but I did uh, green grass and high tides on pro expert drums at 100 percent. No, and- <laughs> I I don't know the song, but if if I can imagine that it's something like uh, like a Dragon Force or something. <laughs> Then I understand what you're saying. It's actually not that hard of a song, but it is a lot of endurance. And on Pro Expert, it's it's obviously just like the name sounds. I mean, it's it's the hardest drumming uh, that you can do. And this is drums, by the way. I didn't I didn't clarify that, but uh, I do Pro Expert drumming on. Um, I have the cymbal set, and I have all the stuff for Rock Band Three. I've been a huge fan of Rock Band. Uh, ever since it came out, uh, I actually think Rock Band is much, much more of a mature title than the Guitar Hero series ever thought about being. I just felt like, you know, Rock Band was much more of a simulation game uh, than Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was really just, you know, colorful buttons being pressed during a, you know, a song, and Rock Band actually makes you feel like you're playing the notes. And especially when the drum kit came out with the initial uh, release. The drums were, I mean, it was like you were playing the drums. In fact, I, uh, I set up a, a real drum kit, which I had never, you know, never played on before whenever I, I had the game. Uh, I, I basically now, I actually own a real drum kit. It, it pushed me to, to buy a real drum kit and kind of get into that. And uh, I can actually play the, the, you know, a real drum set now. I can play a lot of the songs because the notes on Pro Expert are exactly the the real drum notes. You know, these are the the real things. But um, I actually play uh, a, quite a bit of Pro Expert on drums on on Rock Band One, Two, and Three. And um, you know, the first time that I got 100% on on that particular song. The reason I mentioned that song uh, is because it's the longest song that Rock Band has ever released. It's uh, oh, really? nine and a half minutes, I think. Woo! And, nice. uh, you know, to be able to not make a mistake uh, for that amount of time is uh, is pretty rewarding. You know? That is a very insane accomplishment. So, I, you know, and I, I actually do fairly well. I actually get 100% now on various other songs. Uh, I'm my one of my goals. I'm still trying to do is uh, at least get. Uh, I'd like to get Tom Sawyer, uh, you know, at 100. percent You know, by Rush on drums someday, but uh, <laughs> it's not coming to me soon. I've actually gotten 90, 98 uh, percent is the best I've ever done on Pro Expert on Tom Sawyer. So, so why 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 haven't you recorded yourself doing this? You realize how many subs and how much tail you'd get. <laughs> Well, you, you probably wouldn't get the tail, but you definitely you get some the tail. Subs, but probably. definitely, yeah. Well, the thing is, <laughs> let me tell you what's weird about that. This actually goes goes back to again, kind of our gaming history here. But uh, apparently, um, the, when I was involved with NGT, they would not post any videos of, of that nature. They they said that it was uh, copyright infringement, and they wouldn't they wouldn't allow anything that had uh, a, a rhythm game, you know, because of the music involved. And so. That was actually my number one choice. That was my, my one game was Rock Band and, and all the iterations of it. Um, that was the game that I wanted to play the most on my channel. Right. But I've talked with the guys here at TGN. Uh, I've talked with George, the CEO here. Um, and apparently he's got a, a legal team that uh, has 
uh, the ability to allow us to play some rhythm games. And sadly, rhythm games are kind of out of fashion now, but let me tell you, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, not if, not if you green screen your ass in the top corner. Well, exactly. And you know me, that's that's you know, that's what yeah, I'm exactly. going to go after. So I've actually got some, uh, some stuff squared away. In fact, I may even do that. Uh, uh, you may even see that on my channel before the podcast airs. If you're hearing this right now, go over to my channel. You might actually see uh, you might actually see me playing some drums. So go. The channel will be in the in the link in the description as well. Indeed, uh, we'll put those there. Also, uh, if you, Anakin, if you need a wig, like a like a long hair wig, maybe a mullet. <laughs> I can, I can hook you up. Awesome. All right, I'll keep that in mind. I'll get my cut-off wearing, concert shirt well, and my wig. Well, I'd be wearing one. I mean, <laughs> shit. I, I, I don't know. I, I just I feel like that would bring me into that rhythm. But, you know, I... I may live stream it, by the way. I'm thinking about live streaming <laughs> and talking while I'm Dude, doing pro expert drumming. Oh, yeah. Oh, you so could because you could you could still green screen yourself into the damn corner. Exactly. <laughs> That would be awesome, man. I, I can't wait to see that, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you very much. I believe his name was Ryan. Um, no, Paul. Uh, his name is uh, Mewtwo. That's who who did that. So Mewtwo, thank you very much for that. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you sending that in because those are the, those are the type of things I like to talk about. I love talking about myself. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> God, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's horrible. Uh, I smell ham. <laughs> <laughs> But guys, I, I'm impressed upon you. Leave your own accomplishments in the comments below. Uh, also, go ahead if you if you don't mind, give the give the video a thumbs up and a favorite if you if you don't mind. I don't know, maybe see what it does. I don't know. Never tried it before. Yeah, but, I don't uh, think we've ever asked for that. Let's do no, it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's see how many thumbs ups we can get. I mean, especially if you're a hard scoper, if you listen this far. Hit that thumbs up button. It's not going to take. A, it, it, just do it in between a death and Halo or COD. It's not going to take even that time. <laughs> By the time you look back, you'll still be counting down the seconds to respawn. I promise. Indeed, indeed. Um, if you're on WoW, I'm sure that you can do it in the ten or twenty minutes you're waiting to raid. But uh, <laughs> wait, ten or twenty minutes? <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen the prep for a raid? I have friends who did the the twenty man raid, and they literally try to get oh. all twenty people together, and it takes them about four to five hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, well, I just saw the blunt end of it, I guess, then. I <laughs> just saw, like, the end of it where they were like, okay, are you ready? Hold on, give me 20 more minutes. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't have the patience for it. I would never do the rating. <laughs> They're sitting there psyching themselves up, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It, there's a, I'll tell you what, I do have a lot of respect for the coordination that goes into those battles. Oh, I I'll, agree. I, I do have a lot of respect. And, you know, Anakin and I joke about uh, I have a lot of sympathy. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen the dots? <laughs> no. what? I've got to show you the dots. There's this guy. I won't I won't talk about it. You guys who are MMO fans will know what this is. My friend showed me this video. Evidently dot stands for damage over time. And this guy's like sitting there yelling at his team, like, I need more dots! Do the dots and he's like yelling at him like for real. Like he's like, if you don't do it, I'm deducting points. He was like going ape crap on him, man. Oh my I was, god. It was like You've got to be kidding me. They take it that seriously? And I know not everybody does. It's a horrible thing to, to put everybody into, but it was hilarious, man. I, I cracked up. <laughs> in, any uh, case, in any case, we are out of time today, and I really appreciate you guys listening. If you have any feedback, again, email us at podcast at down the scope, podcast down the scope at gmail.com, and we'll get back to you. Um, Thank you so much. Anybody who's new and has listened this far, thank you to all of our originals. We, I hope you learned a little bit more about Anakin and I, even more than you already did. Uh, <laughs> Probably more than you wanted to know. <laughs> you know, we didn't talk about something at the very beginning of this. What's that? We, we're going to be doing... Wait, did we talk about the live? We have not. You, yeah, need, to, you need to mention it before we go. It's a biggie. Yeah. Before we go, next week... I feel really bad talking about this at the very end, but next week, <laughs> we are doing our 25th episode live um so we will be live streaming it on my youtube channel uh viridia guru 22 um and we will we'll definitely be posting some uh, reminders on tgn and on my channel beforehand so if you actually don't hear this um then you'll know uh but if you did i really hope to see you there be looking out for it post something in the comment about it as or in the comments about it as well um, you know, tell us what you think about that. So you're, we're going to be able to actually be doing this live, 
and we are going to have at the end we are going to be responding to some of your you know to your comments and whatnot so it'll be pretty cool uh to to be able to talk to you and you guys hear it live and hear all of our goof ups if we have any uh, <laughs> we won't have any <laughs> oh, no <laughs> No, I, I will not say the F word at one at all. I won't say it <laughs> time by accident. I did really good this time, though. Uh, but, I don't have to edit this at all. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. This has been Down the Scope, the gaming podcast you can't miss, episode 24. 24. And we'll see you live next week, guys. Yeah, see you then, guys. Thanks for listening. Later. Later.